Okay, hello everyone. We are finally live. Um, good evening and welcome to our Right Night event, which is a mutual exchange of hope between incarcerated poets and the community. Um, my name is Imani. I'm Fremont's Prison Book Club and Poetry Specialist. So I'm so happy to be on here with you all. And I'm so excited to see so many folks joining us. I see the chat is live and active. So a warm welcome to our Right Nighters and to our new volunteers. Thank you so, so much for joining the movement. Uh, please feel free to post in the chat where you're from and whether this is your first time joining the event. I see some people have already said it's their first time joining. We love to see it. So welcome to the Free Minds family. Um, so just for a quick overview about how tonight will go, there will be a powerful conversation between our newly selected Congressman John Lewis Fellows, Craig Watson and Jordan Tony, and our Free Minds Deputy Director, Julia Massioli. And they will have a conversation until about 725. And then after that, I will give you all a quick overview about how to use our platform Miro to give poetry feedback. Um, so we will all be on the same page. And definitely please feel free to put in questions that you may have in the chat. And then also there's a button at the bottom, ask a question. So you can ask a question and we will answer it for you. Um, and for the Congressman John Lewis Fellowship, um, it was formed after our hero, Congressman Lewis, visited the Fremont's Book Club at the DC jail. And at the DC jail, he spoke about his graphic novel trilogy, March, which documents his lifetime work as a leader of the civil rights movement. So we are always happy to continuously honor him and his legacy. And without further ado, it is my greatest pleasure to introduce Craig and Jordan, our new Congressman John Lewis Fellows. So Julia will interview them and I will pass it to you, Julia. Awesome, thank you so much, Imani. And thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you also for your patience as we dealt with a few technical difficulties um, this evening, but we're, we're ready to go now and excited to have all of you here tonight for this great conversation. Um, so like Imani said, Jordan and Craig are our new Congressman John Lewis Fellows, um, using poetry and storytelling to carry on his legacy um, in the struggle for racial justice and racial equity. And it's really wonderful to have both of you here tonight, Jordan and Craig, um, and you both have so much experience with Free Minds. And since I know we have new folks here, I'm just gonna do the little quick, try to be very brief sort of overview of what we do. So we run a book club and a writing workshop in the DC jail, juvenile detention center. And we do a long distance book club with our members who are in federal prisons all over the country because DC is not a state. DC doesn't have a state prison. So our members um, typically serve the majority of their sentences in federal prisons all over the country. Um, we first met, I first met Craig in a prison in Virginia, um, which was one of the closer ones. And it was a rare experience that we're able to visit and see our members there in person. Um, it's really, special experience to be able to do that, but um, but that's uh, the rarity with people being scattered all over the country. So um, mail and reading and writing are crucial tools for maintaining community um, while people are so physically isolated in the prison system. And of course we have a reentry program when our members come back to DC, we have a reentry book club, a lot of um, peer support, which Craig has been a leader in this past year um advocacy which jordan has really been involved in he can tell you more about later um, and tons of other uh support and programming that we do in the reentry program um so this is so special though to have you both here and welcome to the first right night as official congressman john lewis fellows so to start i was hoping jordan you could just tell us a little bit about um why you wanted to be the Congressman John Lewis Fellow. It was very um, competitive. <laughs> we had a lot of really strong applicants. So the two of you were, um, you know, it was an application process, it was very highly selective. So why did you want to apply and what did it mean to you um, now to be serving in this role? Um, it, it means a lot to me, you know, I, I look at it as a, a uh, a high honor, you know, to, to be able to live up to some of the things uh, John Lewis did, you know, when he was, you know, younger, 
And, um, you know, growing up, I always, you know, reiterate the lack of resources I had and the lack of support until I met Free Minds. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys may be in the same situation I was when I was younger and just coming home and, you know, lacking support for, for many different things. And, you know, I just want to be that pillar of support for the guys returning to the community. Wonderful. And Craig, I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about why you've been so driven to help people through the reentry process and to do community outreach. And for our, um, our viewers tonight, we have a, a peer support training program. And in the reentry program, our members are getting certified as peer support specialists. And um, Craig has really took the initiative here in, in, in making this program happen and has been um, invaluable, providing invaluable peer support to other Free Minds members as they return to the community. So why does it mean so much to you, Craig, to be able to do that? Or why do you feel um, so motivated to to give in this way? I realized like when I was younger, we had like certain information. Now that I'm older with certain information, I would just basically like pay it forward. So that's why I do the superior poll. And that's why the John Lewis Fellow is is an honor to be amongst Jordan and also the the guys that was before and also so it's just basically like I just look at it just like the information that I know I'm giving it back because I know there's a lot of younger guys out there who you know we look to other people and, and uh, as role models I just try to be a positive role model to them. Yeah, and when you go to, um, and Jordan, feel free to chime in as well if you want to share, but um, when you go to speak to students um, and, or to folks in the community, as we have been doing tons of community outreach virtually um, during COVID, what do you feel like, how do you feel the poetry and your story, um, like what impact do you feel like it has both on the community and for you personally to um, to be that that role model. I mean, I personally I think it gives the um, the audience you know a sense of hope, especially when you talk to maybe some at risk youth or you know just younger the younger population in general because you know. Everyone speaks about how, you know, they want to be for the younger audience, but I don't really, nobody really guides them like Free Minds Poet Ambassadors. We go into, you know, these different communities and schools and, you know, people really feel, you know, the stories that we tell and the things that we say. And, you know, that's where we come in. We serve as like, you know, you know, mentors to, you know, the younger people. And um, I, I personally just, I like to continue doing that. And um, and uh, one of my favorite um, events actually was, you know, dealing with at-risk youth in an Alexandria um, detention facility. So, uh, yeah. And why do you feel like that, um, like that experience was so um, uh, special to you? I mean, really just being in that space, for me, it, it brought back, you know, a lot of memories. And, um, but being able to, to speak to them, to the youth in that situation and just, you know, recognizing that they, that many of them listen and, you know, they just need that 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 support, and um, you know, we just talk. We we had a chance to you know speak to them, and then sit down and talk to them afterwards. So we had a chance to give them a lot of you know life skills advice. You know, maybe what to do. You know, in a work environment. You know, how to prepare themselves for when they return to the community. And you know, I think those things were very impactful to them. I think you both have a real gift for making people feel um, like welcome and accepted and feel like it's okay for them to 
be vulnerable and express themselves. I'm wondering if you could share, um, like Craig, maybe a little bit about how you think, um, uh, how you think you've been able to accomplish that and making people feel comfortable in expressing themselves. And um, how is that important to you? I, I, I think really is basic, I mean, because I come from that same, I, I'm just, I was just, I was once them. So mm -hmm. I feel like I can relate and also me basically like explaining to them what I've been through and how I overcame it. It's just my way of showing them that you could do anything, but you ain't got to do the, uh, go to prison and do the time I did for you to change yourself, change your life. And I think really, if I'd have had somebody like me, Jordan, Shannon, or, you know, Josh, could have been different for me. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I think it could have been different, but I ain't had that. So now, like I always tell people like, what I know now, I give it back to my younger self, but I can't give it to my younger self, so I just give it to somebody else that's younger. And just look at them as my younger self, looking at how I wanted the information given to me. And how, you know, just like, and it's, it's, it's tough sometimes because, like I said, I was once young, and sometimes I ain't listen. But at the same time, you just got to continue to give it to them. You know, because they eventually, you know, eventually get it. And I know, like, this, my situation, what I've been through, it helped people also. Like, I don't, I don't got nothing against it, telling my story or nothing like that. Even though people got different backgrounds and been through different uh, situations in life, but we still can uh, connect and relate in certain areas. Yeah, I think that's really key. And, um, I think that's something that we strive to do at Right Night as well with the poetry is helping people connect, even though we're all in separate spaces um, and our members who've written these incredible poems are in uh, in prisons all over the country, but uh, we're able to still connect through reading and writing. Um, and Craig, um, I know you weren't a, a reader or writer before, um, before you joined Free Minds. So I was wondering if you could share a little bit with the group as well about um, when you really became a reader, writer, and how you, um, what what that experience was like for you when you wrote your first poem. It, it really started from like me not knowing how to uh, read and write, and then it's learning, and then like, I still like struggle with writing, like that's not really one of my top things, but reading is. So like, that's what helped me through it all. Like I told, like I first when I first signed up, I just like my buddy signed me up, and I was like, I ain't into writing poems because I don't know how to rhyme. But then I found out that poem was more than just rhyme, putting words together. It was basically like you expressing yourself. So I just, I just. just so I like doing it and I love doing it because I just, it's therapy for me and I, it's always so to be therapy for somebody else to read a poem. And you say you're not a poet, but you wrote a poem that, that uh, are you ready? Are you willing to share it with us tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull it up on the screen. Um, <clears throat> right here, a Craig Watson original. All right, let me know if you need me to make it bigger. This is, this is okay. All right, Craig, you wanna read this for us? Yeah, this title, Family, this is a poem I wrote, uh, it's titled Family. I said, I share I share a tear for the time lost. My heart crossed over the years. The memories I come across, I cherish as prices as a family. We endure earth Christ, laugh, cry, gave birth and birth. Learn about what life is to the point. I see the light with closed eyelids. Father, this family looks to mothers for everything. She did her best to make her son a man. I often wonder how my mom did it. 
understanding the farthest thing from my mind, neglecting my family tree is part of my every day. We do snaps for poetry here at Free Minds. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love um, particularly the line like laughed, cried, um, gave birth and buried. I think that's really powerful and expressing just like the breadth of human experience. And if folks wanna write in the chat as well, like any lines that stood out to them, would be awesome. So thank you so much, Craig. And Jordan um, is gonna share a poem for us from a poet who couldn't be here tonight. Um, poet named Abdul, who is currently incarcerated in Colorado. I will pull that up on my screen as well, so you all can follow along. And this poem is um, in the virtual tables tonight, so you'll be able to write comments for Abdul if you, if you feel moved by this poem, which we certainly hope you do. Okay, this poem is titled, What Fulfills Me by Abdul. With writing, I found a voice that I never knew existed, fulfilling my soul and hunger for more. Reading books I never knew about, taking me on a journey that made me soar to greater heights. Malcolm X made my vision clear, while Maya Angelou showed me the power in words. Angela Davis made me passionate and loving history and able to learn that it's not just a man's world, but a woman's too. Leaving me fulfilled like I've never been before. I on to the next journey to grow some more. Thank you, Jordan, for bringing Abdul's voice um, here with us tonight. We always say when a free mind's poem is read, hope is spread. So thank you both for spreading hope and all of you as well who are gonna be reading more poems tonight. Um, so I do wanna talk a little bit about what we're doing here with reading the poetry and writing responses. Um, and I know we have some returning right night folks in the mix, but also some newbies. So Craig or Jordan, do you have advice for new volunteers on like what kind of um, feedback you would want to receive or like Craig, if there's any comments you remember getting in the mail, um, any particular things that stood out to you or advice you would share with the volunteers tonight? First, I just wanna say, I appreciate just, you know, y'all have an open mind is to sit down and uh, read the poems that we write. It mean, so it mean a whole lot to us. I always say us because even though I'm home, I once was in prison and I still represent them. And I still speak as us. We ain't free so we all free. But just like, you know, send words and encourage me. And uh, encourage the, uh, the people to continue to write poems because it's, it, it made a lot just to get the mail and get the uh, positive feedback and continue to uh, help us move forward and help us continue to write. Yeah, that's great, great feedback, great advice. Jordan, what about you? Do you have um, advice for the volunteers or anything you wanna add about why, um, why this is so important and so impactful? Uh, I, I I always just um, tell people to try not to be critical of you know the work, but you know more encouraging and and uh, because that might be the only message that you know one of the guys get uh, in the day, and that might be the message that keeps them you know going the next day and the day after that. So uh, you know. The, the poetry is not made to be critical of, but, you know, just to, to find the words or, you know, the phrases in them that, you know, really stand out to you and that you can relate to and, and be able to speak on. Yeah, I always like to think of it as um, just being, it's about connecting, not critiquing, you know. Um, so it's not an English class, so please also, like, don't feel pressure, like if you're not a writer or a poet yourself, that doesn't matter. We're all just um, coming to the table with our, our own unique perspectives and experiences. And we just ask folks to, like Craig said, keep an open mind. Um, 
and just share, like Jordan said, anything you relate to or connect to, something that made you think or feel. Um, however you respond to the to the poetry, it will mean so much to the poets to get that um, get that feedback and get that connection in the mail. And if hopefully you'll leave tonight just wanting to read more and more poems. So just wanted to let every, everyone know that next month we're going to do something a little different. Instead of a right night, we're going to do a right week. So the last week in April, um, we're going to have uh, poems published online for the whole week, open for people to read and comment um, whenever works for you. So if you're not available on a Wednesday night, you know, you can do it whatever. Um, whatever day and time during the week works for you. So we won't be doing a live video um, in April, but we will have the poems open for the whole week so you can um, read away and take really take your time and, um, and get to experience as many of the poems as you want and whatever, whatever timing works for you. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Imani. Actually, or do we have questions from the audience? No, there's so much going on in the chat. I haven't been able to keep up with all of it. Yes, there are two questions, uh, one from Shaquila and one um, from Deborah. The one from Deborah says, how hard is it for you to share such personal work in such a public forum? I admire your willingness to be vulnerable. It is a brave thing to do. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Craig, Jordan, one of you want to take that? I think you're both. Um, is that really, really? I mean, it, it it was, you know, difficult, you know. But as I I grew older, uh, it it started to 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 be easier, and you know, it started to make more sense. Um, because I grew up as somebody who was not open at all, like um, you know. When Free Minds first met me, you know, I was inside of a cell at DC jail and uh, I wasn't opening up to them at all. Like, I didn't even know what this program was, but um, over time it, it interests me the work that they're doing. And um, here we are um, over time, you know, as I matured, you know, I guess that side of me matured and, and allow me to open up to more people. Yeah, Craig and me, go ahead. Not to cut you off. I think with me, it was uh, going to my first right night. Like I came home Monday, I was at right night Wednesday. And uh, I met a couple from Buffalo and I had to sit down and tell them my story. And like, I, I went in like they was gonna judge me, but they did. You know, they was more concerned of uh, the time that I was given and stuff like that. So that would made me basically like open up. So that would make me feel comfortable when I'm around people and telling them the things I've been through and stuff like that. Because I, I went in the first time basically like thinking people going to judge me. So now I walk in now, like don't even think about that. So that's why it's just, I'm just... It's just natural to me now. I love that. That's so, um, so inspiring to hear that. And I think that gets at to um, the way that the community support can be so impactful because even by writing a comment on, on the poem tonight, you'd be showing the poet on the other end that, um, that there is a supportive community out here, that there are people who care what they have to say and are rooting for them. And I think that all helps to, um, to combat the stigma that so many returning citizens face and to really show people that, um, that we're here for them and that, that we believe in them and we want to, um, we can't wait to, see, to welcome them home and hopefully they'll be at another right night soon, like Craig at his first right night. I remember That's that, I remember but I remember um, you just come home and it was so exciting for me too, just to, to see you in person. And that's why like so many of us, uh, I'm gonna say, if it's not a hundred percent, I'm gonna say 99% of us, when we come home, we reach out to Free Mind and try to help 
anywhere we can because free mind has always been there for us when we was in so it's just us free mind putting us in position to uh be a spokesman not just for free mind but just for uh letting the information out that we have that we accumulate over the years and how we deal with certain uh trials and that's what the peer support group is about learning and facing how you deal with certain things that you might be faced with in life because we usually we deal with it this way we learn to deal with it another way because it the negative way is not the way that we got to go about things it's always another way there's the positive way so that's why i like i appreciate free mind all the time well, we love to hear that. We appreciate you. And there's no free minds without all of you, both us on the screen here and also all of you guys watching at home. Um, do you have any more questions, Imani, or should we move on to the Miro tips? Um, there was one more really good question uh, from Tara's neighbor, actually. So the question says, Craig and Dorothy, why do you still stay connected to free minds after you are released? Don't you just want to try to forget the hard times? Isn't it hard to still see what happens to incarcerated youth? I think it's easy to, uh, it's, 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 I ain't gonna say it's easy to forget, but that'd be the easy way out. You know what I'm saying? Like, certain things you obligated to. And I feel like free mind always been there for us. So, if they weren't there for us, they probably wouldn't even be no us for real, like basically like as the poor the bastards. Just like Free Mind Starter from a young man named Glenn that was on death row, 16, 17 years old, and was executed. And his last words was continue to push people in jail to read. Any one of us, I could have been Glenn. Glenn could have been me, but this how God wanted to work. So I just feel like this how this how way of giving back, and you can't never forget uh, who was there for you during them tough times. And I think, like I say, like free mind just put us in a position to get out, get the word out there to help those out there. So I feel like it's, there's no separation to me and free mind. Me person. I think, I think you know, it, to piggyback off of what Craig said, uh, it's it's just been a like a natural connection with, with any of the members and you know staff at Free Minds. It's just like a natural connection. And for me personally, you know, I I went to a, a high school that you know stems from public policy so just finding a program or a platform to really do this work and you know give back to others in a way that i can was you know it's all about when really and, um i found that program in free mind you know i just wanted to share too um what you're saying i uh, like you guys really are making such a huge difference, not just to the free minds community, but um, beyond that, like Jordan is part of a, a initiative um, to urge the governor of Virginia to posthumously pardon the Martinsville seven, who were seven men who were um, unjustly tried and um, executed in Virginia in the fifties. Is that right, Jordan? I got the dates right. Well. I just heard 61, today. I believe, 1951. Yeah. And we're still pushing for that pardon. Um, and there's a petition online that folks can sign. Um, but I just heard today that Virginia is abolishing the death penalty. So there's um, there's much more work to be done, but I think we have to um, acknowledge and celebrate these these steps towards that progress as well. And I'm so grateful to all of all of you guys and all the other advocates who are um, pushing pushing this change forward. 
And thank you so much for the beautiful questions that you all have asked. Um, I guess with that being said, I can go ahead and share my poem. Well, not my poem, my screen, so we can then look at poems. So I will do that for you all. Okay. So, um, are you all able to see the poems? I mean, the screen? Okay, yes, great. This is your screen. So this is the mirror board. So when you go on the mirror board, you will see this note on the right from your table host. Um, so there's just a brief introduction right here and then other tips that you can use on the side. And then if your table is too filled, has too many comments, you can feel free to go to these other tables and here are the links to their tables below. And then I will close that out pretty briefly. Um, so the poems right now are pretty small, but if you want to zoom in on your screen, you would go to the bottom right side and you can click the plus sign. So sometimes it is a little blurry. So if it's blurry, I would suggest to zoom in to your poem to 110% and then give it a few seconds so it can stop being blurry and then you can zoom back out. So if you wanna see other poems that you have, you can either use two fingers if you have a Mac to scroll to the right or you can click and hold down on the screen and it'll also take you to the right side. So you click your cursor, hold down, and then you'll be able to see all of the other poems that we have here. And then on the left side, if you want to type, you would click the T for the text button and then click anywhere on a poem and then that will allow you to be able to type. So say for example, if you wanna to write to Alex, so I would say, dear Alex, always making sure to mention the poet's name. And then I would write my comment and sign it sincerely, Imani, or whatever your name may be. And then also down here in the bottom left corner is the chat option. So in the chat option, your table hosts introduce themselves again. So you can also go here and comment any questions that you may have, and then your table host will be able to answer those questions for you. And this is a new tip, but if you would like to hide the cursors, that is also available at this top option right here. I would just add, you know, there's lots of people here tonight, which is fantastic. And there's lots of people I see already writing on the poems. So if you feel like one of the poems, you're worried that it's like too crowded, um, you can write, write your comment anywhere in the space around it. Our team will um, get everything in a printable format when, when the evening's over or you can just move over to another poem or another one of the virtual tables that maybe doesn't have as many comments on it already. And we also are here online until 8.30 to support you. So you can call us at 202-795-9657 um, um, if you need assistance. And that number is in that, um, that right hand tips thing that Imani just showed you. Um, on the screen. And we also have a very special uh, Zoom meeting that will start right after this for hands-on learning for anyone who wants some uh, more tips and tricks for how to get creative on Miro. And Jordan and Janet will be meeting people there in that Zoom meeting. Um, do we have any last comments or questions from the audience before we move on to the poetry tonight? I see one from Molly. She said, uh, are the poems, are they gonna be open to comment on throughout the week? Um, that's a great question. So um, they'll probably, they'll be, they're not gonna close right at 8.30 tonight. So don't feel like you're gonna get kicked out, but we will have to um, close them probably by the end of the week as we have to start um, preparing them so we can print them and mail them to the poet. So unfortunately they're not open indefinitely. Um, Although we always have poems on our website, freemindsbookclub.org, just click on poems at the top and we post new poems every week and you can write comments online whenever you want and we print those out and mail them to the poets as well. Um, and I will add that all of this um, printing and mailing does cost money <laughs> and as well as all the other materials, uh, writing prompts, discussion questions, books, uh, publications, we have a magazine, the Free Minds Connect, that we publish and mail to all of our members in over 100 federal prisons across the country. Um, and it does cost money, so we couldn't do this without um, our wonderful supporters. So if you feel so 
inclined to support us, there's a donate button at the bottom. You can go ahead and click that. Um, even just a dollar will go a long way, cover the cost of postage and printing for, for some of these poems. Um, so thank you all so much. Do we have any last questions before we wrap up or any other comments? Craig, Jordan, any, any last things you wanna share? I say it was just it's an honor just to be here. I appreciate y'all for uh, taking our time to uh, look over the poems and write on them. And also, thanks to the Free Mind staff for all their support. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. All right. I don't know how I can follow that up, <laughs> but um, you know, thank you all for for being here tonight. You know, it means a lot to. Not just us, but you know the guys who who can't be here and um, whose poetry that you all will be commenting on. So thank you once again. Yeah, thank you, thank you for those words, Jordan and Craig. Oh, and I should mention so when you're ready to read poems, which I hope you are, you can go ahead and click that green button at the bottom of your screen that says "Read Poems" on the Miro tables. That will take you to a page on our website that has all the links to the virtual tables. It also has the information to access the Zoom meeting that will be starting right after this. And also there is a Google document with poems in it if you find that Miro just isn't working on your computer. Sometimes that happens, it just won't load for whatever reason. Um, and sometimes the Google doc is just an easier, um, it's just a, an easier method to read and respond to the poems. So that's all there on that link right where it says read poems. So again, thank you all so much. Um, thank you to Imani and Jordan and Craig for being here with us tonight. Um, and to all 294 of you guys who logged on <laughs> on a Wednesday evening. Um, so go read away and um, uh, we hope to see you again in our next Bright Night. Thank you. Thanks everyone. So go ahead and read away. Or join us on the Zoom meeting if you if you want as well. <laughs>